What's up, y'all? I'm Kelly O'Hara. You may know me as two-time world champion and gold medalist, but there's a lot more to me than just that. I'm an entrepreneur, activist, and investor. I just moved back to the Big Apple, the financial capital of the world, which got me thinking about my own personal finances, which, at times, can be stressful. Financial stress can really wear you down, and if you know me, you know how much I value health and wellness. And I know I'm not alone. Many of you have the same problem and may be wondering, where do I even begin? Well, that's why I teamed up with the financial gurus at WIS to help us make sense of all this. Whether you're just starting out or looking to take your financial game to the next level, then this one's for you. From budgeting and saving to investing and building wealth, we'll cover it all and have you on your way to financial freedom. At like 22 years old, I'm like, you're a millionaire. You just don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to invest. I think that's a great idea. Let's do this. All right, let's put our money to work. It's all about the investment basics today. Joining me are my friends Stephanie and Paul from WIS. So we covered the fundamentals in part one. Once people have a handle on their finances and they start to save some money up, what happens next? Where do they go with it? And that's, that, that's today, that's talking investment. So let's just start there. What are the investments that people can put their extra money into? That's a great question. So you want to start with the fundamentals on the investment side. So basically three basic buckets, right? Okay. Stocks are uh, instruments that allow you to own part of a company. Bonds are instruments that allow companies to borrow from you. Okay. And funds are diversified pools of stocks, bonds, or both. Okay. Then you've got actually one more asset class, which we talked about offline, and I'm going to bring up here is real estate. You have a uh, funds that are diversified pools, which you can invest in um, on the liquid side of the markets where you can uh, take exposure to real estate as well. Makes sense. So the way I've approached finances and what my understanding is, you want a balanced portfolio and I look at it kind of like how you would build a soccer team. So let's kind of go through the different types of investments uh, and attribute them to you know, what you would say they are on a, on a soccer team. Yeah. So the first one is, I feel like the, the, the one thing people think about when they think about investing is stocks. Yeah. So let's talk about that first. Let's think of stocks like they're your forwards, yeah. right? You're the, your attacker, right? So you can own stocks individually or within a fund, okay. right? And I'm gonna start with the individual ones because I think that's a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted to own a share in, let's say, Apple, that's like having an individual stock. Now, the challenge with that, you're participating in the upside, but you're also participating in the downside, yes. right? And an individual stock, it's a great thing, but it puts all the onus on you. What's great about, let's say, getting started, you can buy a, a basket of 500 stocks, which would be called the index fund. Yeah, and uh, I, it, I'm going to pause because yeah. I feel like people who are first starting out, they, or at least I did, I didn't know about index funds. Yeah. Like, I didn't understand the concept of it. Right. And like you said, individual stocks have a lot of risk to them because yep. it's one, it's a, the That's performance right. of one company. Whereas index funds, yeah. like you're just gonna get into, and what I think more people, it, it's almost like a better entry point. Much better. Because it's, it feels a little bit safer. So talk it, why. It is, and you can st you're still gonna score goals that yeah. way. But we're attacking now where we have exposure to 500 different companies. So when you think about your entry point, you're, you're coming in and you're able to now benefit from how those companies are doing. You don't have all of your risk with one, one company anymore. A long term, they absolutely are gonna, are gonna crush it compared to a lot of other investment investments. options. Yeah. yeah, so over time, it's, you know, it's the stock market has been yeah. the best option for investing. Big time. But talk about the length of time yeah. and, and why that matters. Because I think that so many people want a big win quickly. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all built that way, but it's important to understand what you're actually getting into and what that what it means. So you have to be committed to the long term on this, right? So sometimes what happens, somebody invests and they have this fantastic year. And then almost thinks like, oh, you know, like this is what's supposed to happen. Yeah, this right? is what's always going <laughs> to happen. happen. Yes, and that's it doesn't, the problem. Right? Like what goes up must come down. Yeah. Uh, but over time, you know, you're going to, the trend is going to be that it's going to increase. And, and I think it's being able to ride that out. And, and time is your best friend. 
Like I would say like when somebody at like 22 years old, I'm like, you're a millionaire. You just don't know it. Yeah, that's right? a great yeah. way to put it. Yeah, because you have time on your side. 100%. Yeah. What are your defenders, your midfielders? And I understand that it's like funds, bonds, CDs. I don't even know if those go together. This is something that I don't have a lot of knowledge on, so I would love for you to break it down for me. Yeah, so bonds are your defenders, right? They're your steady, uh, fixed, they're called fixed income for a reason, right? And CDs are in that category as well. So the basic fundamental behind a bond is that you're lending money and you're getting, you know what you're getting back and there's also a maturity to it. So okay. if you're saving for something where you know you need the money in the next two years, you wanna buy a bond because you're getting the face value back. If you're saving for something in the long run like retirement, you want some stocks in that because you want the money to grow and you have time for it to recover. If you have two, three years, you wanna use mainly bonds or CDs. CDs are, are very short term bonds or medium term bonds actually that you're lending money to a bank, it's FDIC insured and you're getting a coupon back. And when you say you're getting a coupon back, so you are giving this, you know, you're investing this money and you know for certain what you will receive in Correct. return. Correct. And is there risk to it in the sense of it can go down? Yes, absolutely. The price will fluctuate okay. with, the, with the market for that bond, but there's an end date to it, right? So not on a bond fund. Funds have no maturities, which give, give them a little bit more risk. Okay. But a bond or a CD, the price of it will fluctuate at the maturity, you'll get the face value back. If you sell it prior to maturity, you don't know what the market's gonna be on that day for that bond, so you're not sure what you're gonna get back. So that's a little bit riskier. That makes sense. And is it based on, is it the interest rate? Like what do you look at when you're going to buy a, a bond, bond or So a you look at many, it's actually pretty complicated. Okay. We <laughs> kind of sum it down. Make it, it, make it the most make simple. Make it as simple yeah. as possible. Yeah. And the one thing I would just say, just like for the coupon, it's like that's a cash payment you receive. Exactly, yeah. good point. So a bond's price depends on many different things depend, depending on what kind of bond it is. But the main thing that'll make the price of a bond fluctuate is the interest rate and also the credit quality of the bond. Yeah, and I think what's real important, we spoke about time, right? If you really need money at some point in the future, in the near term future, you really want to get into something safe, yes. right? You can leave it in a bank. That would be like the absolute safest thing to do. Cash. Now you have to consider though, you know, is that good enough if I just leave it in cash? Because I, I have an option. The option is I could get a CD. And the longer that you will leave the money with them, the more they're willing to give you money back. Very safe. If you wanted to get a little extra return, you would then look at a bond. And then you can look at, a, like there's, a, there's so many different kinds of bonds, but the safest bond by far is the bond backed by the US government. Got it. Yes. This has been super helpful, so thank you guys for being here today. I feel like this was a great next step in understanding finances and you know this is like the next level to getting to financial freedom so thanks for being thanks here for and chatting well, thank it. you thank yeah. you for having us and thank you all for being here today and taking the time to learn more about finances and hopefully getting to the next step of financial freedom